Proverbs chapter 3, amen. I'm going to start at verse 3. Amen, glory to God. It says, trust in the Lord. No, no you know what? I'm going to start at verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life. And peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find, so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase so shall thy barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst out with new wine my son despise not the chastening of the lord neither be weary of for his correction weary of his correction for whom the lord loveth he correcteth even as a father the son in whom he delighteth father we give you praise today for your word Hallelujah. God, I ask your help. I ask your help. I ask your grace. I ask for your anointing upon me, God, this morning to share the thoughts that you have placed in my heart. I pray, Father God, for those who would hear, that they would listen, that they would receive, that they would act upon your word. In faith. Now we come against anything that would try to inhibit, prohibit, or resist our growth in Christ. We rebuke you right now. And we take authority over you. We say by faith you are under our feet. Because you are. Now Father we're grateful for everything you provided for us. Every microphone. The camera systems. The Wi-Fi. The technology, everything we, you gave us by your hand that we might broadcast this message beyond these four walls. We thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. As I was pondering what to minister today, yesterday the Lord put a thought on my heart concerning shortcuts. Now, those of us that are computer savvy, we understand that there are certain keystrokes you can do that's called a shortcut. Or sometimes we can go and we can drag something onto our desktop. And so then the only thing we need to do is just click it and it opens up. We don't have to go through all the different measures and all that. It's called a shortcut. But I want to minister about shortcuts in a traditional fashion. Come on, somebody. You know, like that time when you was on the freeway. Well, let's mention a freeway. Let's say the 91. Let's mention another freeway, maybe the, the 10. Or one of the five. You notice I mentioned all them bad freeways. Amen. Praise the Lord. And you see, you know, and everything was backed up. And you said, you know what? I'm going to get off this freeway. And you got off that freeway and you thought you could take some side streets. Come on, somebody. And you took them side streets and you thought you was going parallel with the freeway. And them side streets led to worse traffic than you was on when you was on the freeway. 
Now, maybe it never happened to you, but I know it happened to me at least a time or two. Amen. It's been time. Amen. Glory to God. I thought I was taking a shortcut and wound up at a dead end. <laughs> amen. Up some dirt road. I think I was coming one time. I was coming from, uh, amen, San Bernardino or Colton down Ritchie Canyon. And I said, let me get off of this and go down one of these other side streets. It looked like it, looked like it goes up some hills, but it looked like it get me on it. And I got all up in there and I was on somebody's ranch. I said, let me get out of here for nobody don't find me again. <laughs> All right. Amen. But God wants, I believe he wants me to talk about this shortcut. Uh -huh. Praise the Lord. Right. So what's a shortcut? Definition, uh, a shortcut is a route that's more direct than the one that's ordinarily taken. It's a shorter or an alternative route than the customary route. Watch this. It's a method or a means of doing something more directly and quickly and often not so thoroughly as by ordinary procedure. In other words, when you do a shortcut, you're cutting th some things out. Proverbs is telling us that we're not supposed to lean to our own understanding if I would read verses 5 and 6 from the Amplified Bible it may clarify some things for you and I verse 5 said we must lean on we must trust in and be confident in the Lord with all our heart and it says and mind and do not rely on your own insight or understanding it says in verse 6 in all your ways know recognize and acknowledge him and he will direct and make straight and plain your paths somebody say amen to that as we're reading this, amen, it brings to mind, or as I was reading this and allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to me, it brought to mind one of the parables of Jesus. That parable is found in Luke chapter 15. And it starts at verse 11. It's the parable of this lost son we call that lost son the prodigal son we use the word prodigal because those of us that understand this particular parable we understand that he was wastefully extravagant thereby we derive the word prodigal the story goes this way. A certain man had two sons. And the younger of the two sons said to his father, Give me the portion of the goods that falleth unto me. And it says that the father divided unto them his living. Mm -mm -mm. Let me pause right there. Remember, we're dealing with the idea is the shortcut. Let me give you a title so you don't get lost. I, very simple title. God's way is the best way. Very simple. God's way is the best way. 
The Bible says in not many days after the father had given, had divided unto them the two sons his living, the younger of the two gathered all the st his stuff together and he went to a far country and he wasted his substance with riotous living. Thus we arrive at the title prodigal. In verse 14 it says, And when he had spent everything he had, there arose a mighty, mighty, mighty famine in that land. Not in the original land where he started off at, but where he went to. Things got tight. Things got shelled. If you understand what I'm going. And he began to be in want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words, he was not following the prescribed method. He was not taking the customary or the traditional route to receiving he tried to take a shortcut often time when we read this text we don't talk about that we just talk about what he did very very seldomly do we ask the question why what was in this young man's heart that caused him to desire to circumvent the traditional method of receiving his inheritance. Y'all ain't gonna help me today. I know a lot of us is missing today, but can I can 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 we allow the Holy Ghost to just you know make up the difference in here? He spent everything in that place, and a mighty famine came where he was. And it says he went and joined himself to somebody that was in that place and that person that he adjoined himself with or he partnered with showed what kind of partner he was sent him to go feed swine sent him in his field to feed swine oh help me preach Lord so it becomes abundantly obvious to you and I that this citizen that he adjoined himself with was not from the same uh, country that he was from. Uh, this individual whom he uh, adjoined himself with uh, was not a Hebrew, was not an Israelite, had not the same covenant understanding that this son had. Uh, because we understand that it's the customs of the Hebrew. It's the customs of the Israelites. Not to touch swine. Ah. Did you see how the devil works? First he gets you anxious. He gets you want to make shortcuts. Come on somebody. And then he gets you to the place where you're desperate. And you begin to do things that you wouldn't ordinarily do. See, he's devious like that. He's scandalous like that. Oh, you ain't helping me up in this place. We, we live in a time, glory to God, where folks is in a hurry to go nowhere. Ah, come on, somebody. But you got to understand, glory to God, that God's got a plan for your life and my life. And if we follow his plan for our life, praise the Lord, it may be a different way than the world is going. Come on, somebody. The Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man. But that way ends in destruction. The King James uses the word death. He would have, he sent them into his fields to feed swine. This young man got abundantly desperate because he 
started looking at the swine food. And it says he would have fain. Oh, come on, somebody. Can I get can I get real on this word fain? It don't mean fake. It means he would have gladly ate the pig's food. Not just the pig, but the pig's food. Help me preach somebody. And further we and so we can see further, we can cast a glint, capture a glimpse of the depravity that this young man in the desperate situation that this young man found himself in. Yeah. Glory to Jesus' name. He would have gladly filled his belly with the corn cobs, the husks, the, the pods that the swine ate. And then it goes deeper. It says, and then nobody gave him anything. But the Bible says something happened. I was talking to somebody a little couple weeks ago. And I told him, I said, you know, there's a resurrection to the word. Uh, you got to understand that this word, hallelujah, it is God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It's the word that becomes. You got to understand something. And if you've ever availed yourself to real good preaching, come on, somebody. The word somehow got inside you. And it, it, it appears, I feel the Holy Ghost, y'all. It appears that it lies dormant. But you see, God, my God, has a prescribe, a prescription. Come on, for your salvation. He has a prescription, glory to God, for you to be all you can be. Y'all ain't hearing me up in this place. He's got a prescription and glory to God. There's a time release, glory to God, on that seed of that word that's been planted deep down inside your heart. No man knows what day is going, but there's a, there's a resurrection day for that seed that's been put inside you. The Bible talks about that word. Now, it says in him was life. And that life was the light of men. It said the light shined in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. See, God is trying to illustrate. He's trying to, he's trying to, he's trying to get over to us the strength of his word. You can't fight against it. Come on. It comprehended it not. The best thing you can do is what God told Paul. Give in. Because it's hard on Z to kick against the bricks. Sometimes you just got to give it up. I said sometimes you got to give it up. Hallelujah. You've been trying to do everything you can your way. Hey, been trying your best. You got, you had it all figured out. You had all your plans in place. But there's one thing that you forgot to figure. That was your plan. The question we have of the day is what's God's plan? What's God's plan? What's God's plan for your life? Very seldomly, glory to God, do we stop to consider what does the one who made us and not we ourselves want for our lives? Come on, somebody. We are the sheep of his pasture. The Bible says we are the work of his hands. We are his workmanship. Ah, uh, Come on and help me preach Lord Jesus. Nobody gave him anything. But that back to the resurrection of that word. 
That word, when it's inside you, it begins to break through the shell. It begins to break through. I'm talking about that word that is quick. That word that is sharper than a two-edged sword. That word that is living and that word that is active. That word that, are, that pierces to the divining and sunder of the joints and the marrow and the soul and the spirit. That word which is in fact a designer of thoughts and intents of the heart. I'm talking about the living word. Come on, somebody. There's many of there's many of people, glory to God, that have surrendered their lives to Jesus at some point. But it appeared that Jesus took too long. And so my God, they decided to take a shortcut. Y'all not preaching. Y'all ain't going to help. They decided to take a shortcut. I can do this by myself. After all, glory to God, my friends got that. And this other one got this. And this one got that. And my God, and God just seems like he takes too long, glory to God. But I read somewhere in the Holy Bible where it says, let patience have her perfect work. That you might be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. You got to understand something about God. God don't want us taking shortcuts. Because sometimes when you take a shortcut, you miss out on something, glory to God. That's important that you miss. Come on, somebody. I feel like preaching. I feel like preaching. See, it, it's taken me three plus decades to learn this thing. Come on, somebody. See, some folks, amen, they just, just, just be running their head against the wall. God's trying his best to get your attention, but you just you just believe, glory to God, that you can bust through that wall. And God has said, I'm standing right here. Glory to God, I ain't going nowhere. And until you get it right, you ain't going nowhere either. Somebody got to get, got to get, understand what God is saying. Glory to Jesus. I know it's hard sometimes but the bible tells us my god that, that we're not supposed to get un, 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 we must understand this chastening of god hallelujah god don't chasten you because he hates you he chastens you glory to god hallelujah because he loves you he corrects you because he wants you on the right path he wants you to get everything that he's ordained for you and i to receive I feel like preaching today. I feel like preaching today. This young man said, the Bible says the young man came to himself. Come on, somebody. He came to himself. He came to realize who he really was. Come on, somebody. That word, in our case, that word that's been sown in our spirit. Come on, somebody. Sometime from a little child. You know how you have anybody ever sat up in church and laughed at the church folk? Well, oh, come on, somebody. Somebody sent us a video the other day, glory to God, of one of the young ladies we used to know in church, glory to God, and she was fainting like she was one in one of them sanctified churches. She was fainting like she was shouting, and she was going through all the different motions and making the facial expressions of how, how the Holy Ghost be on you and come on somebody hallelujah but you know one thing about it that might she might have made a joke about that thing but I'm gonna tell you something uh, something else that shows God that you know something yeah. oh that's a problem for somebody that's a that you you didn't realize it but you was testifying that you know something about somebody you know something about something you've had an experience you've seen something come on somebody it was real deep the devil seen it too Oh, you ain't helping, helping me in the place. So now you do those kind of things and you become a target. I'm going to mention this quick and I'm going to get back to my text. You become a target. Because what the devil does not want to happen is for that seed of that word to open up on you. Come on, somebody. Because he knows that if at a certain time that revelation or that resurrection power of that word that's been put inside you, it's going to open up and it's going to start ministering to your soul and it's going to wake you up and it's going to cause you to come to yourself. The Bible said this young man came to himself. He came to himself. We used to play a game. And we say, come out, come out wherever you are. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Come out. Come out. Wherever you are. Ah, hallelujah. 
that's like the Bible. It tells us to come out from among them and touch not the unclean thing. Y'all ain't gonna help me up in this place, but I'm gonna preach like I'm by. I'm gonna preach like I'm in a mirror talking to myself. The Bible says he came to himself and he had a revelation. Glory to God that even though he was in the wrong place at the wrong time doing the wrong thing way back home, he understood. He got a revelation that my daddy got hired servants. Glory to God that's eating good. My daddy got hired servants glory to God that's got enough bread uh, my, and they said enough to spare in other words he knew that in his father's house was many mansions if, if it was not so he would not have told him uh, he understood that in his daddy's house uh, there was abundance right there there was overflow because he said they got enough bread for them and and enough to spare he says and I'm sitting up in here and I'm starving y'all ain't hearing me up in this place he said I perish with home the word perish means I'm getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse hallelujah but he came to himself says I'm going to get up and go to my father he says I'm going to confess some stuff I'm going to let my daddy know daddy I blew it daddy hallelujah I sinned against heaven and I stood before you in other words everything you taught me I went back on it everything you told me I didn't trust it daddy I circumvented the system I tried to take a shortcut to get my blessing I call it a manufactured blessing in other words you tried to do it your own self but you didn't wait on God somebody help me hallelujah I said hallelujah anybody ever tried to bless theyself Come on, somebody. See, we can testify. We've tried to bless ourselves before. Come on, somebody. And every time we try to bless ourselves, these are the problem is we're finite in our thinking. We can't see everything. We don't know everything. We don't know what the future holds. Come on, somebody. It's like the man who thought he had a whole bunch of stuff. He said, you know what I'm going to do? He says, I'm going to build more burns. Come on, somebody. He says, you fool. You don't know what tomorrow going to bring. Come on, somebody. He thought he was going to eat, drink, and be merry. But he didn't. Come on, somebody. Stuff happens sometime. Come on. That's why it's important to put your hand in the hand of the one who knows tomorrow. You need to put your hand in the hand of the man who knows next year. You need to put your hand in the hand of the man. Come on, somebody who knows that my God all your days. He knows my God, come on somebody I, I, I got a revelation I got an understanding somebody that God know who your husband is he know who your wife is God knows who your, your children he know how many you gonna have he know their names he knows how many boys how many girls God know he knows where the doors that's supposed to be open for you he knows he knows he knows he knows what doors you shut that you didn't creeped up in you ain't helping me preach up in here but I feel like preaching anyhow I'm talking about God's way is the best way he began to confess to his father he said this is what I'm going to say he began to rehearse his confession come on somebody he began to rehearse his confession what do I mean by rehearse? He's not even in front of his father. But he already knows what he needs to say. Because he knows his father. He has a relationship with his father. Come on somebody. Isn't that something about God? He, he knows when we try to come up with them million dollar words. And he knows those words ain't even your real heart. Somebody might say, oh God, I require your assistance at this specific point in time. But God really knows what touches his heart is when you just say, Lord, help me. Because I can't help myself. I can't do this by myself. I give. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I give. I need a miracle. I got myself in a pit. I got myself in a ditch and the more I try to scratch myself out more dirt falls in and I go deeper and I end up stuck he 
came to himself. He came to himself. What made him come to himself? The teaching. The training. The experiences. Caused him to come to himself. Is this making sense to somebody? Hallelujah. 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 He said, so he got up. No, he, he, he even went deeper. He said, I, I didn't sin so bad. I violated traditions. I violated holiness. I violated righteousness. I violated covenant protocol. He said, I'm going to rise. I'm getting up from here. I'm getting up. Anybody ever got up before? Come on, somebody. I'm getting up. Elder Patterson, it says, I will arise. In other words, he made a decision. In his mind. He says, I have, a, I have decided that no matter how low I done got, how bad it done got, how broke I am, how far away, I'm making up my mind right now. That I'm going to go to my father. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know how far that country was. Uh -huh. But this young man realized that no matter how far away he was, no matter what it took, he was going to get back home uh -huh. to his... Y'all ain't hearing me in this place. I'm going to get back. Come on, somebody. Can I preach to somebody from, from experience? It don't make... When you, come on, somebody. It don't make no difference how far you think you didn't came. The Bible says that the arm of the Lord is not short that he cannot redeem. you got to understand God is like Inspector Gadget. I don't care how far you that, that pitch you in. It seems like his arm just keeps getting longer and longer and longer and longer and longer. And he can pull you up, but you got to surrender. You got to give it up. Come on, somebody. You got to stop trying to do it your way. You got to understand something. When I got up there in Ritchie Canyon, and I was all in the wrong roads, you know, I just couldn't just do a, a little old left hand turn. No, 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 no. I had to turn that car all the way around and go back the same way I came. Now, in the spiritual vernacular, we call that repent. That's right. Amen. That's right. Repent. Yeah. Yeah. To get right back on that sure road. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Oh, God, help me. Y'all know the end of this story. When that young man came to himself and was trying to confess. You hear that first lady? He was trying to tell, tell his father about the problem. The father, what the father knew what was already in his heart. That's right, that's right. Come on, somebody. Right. He only got a little bit. He said, and said unto father, I, I sinned again. And the father just said, go, go get my servants. Uh, Y'all ain't hearing me. Uh, well, God, what, what, what was God be saying to you and I? Release my angels. Go get my angels right now. Y'all come on, somebody. God's got no minister and angels. God's servants, glory to God. Those that hearken to the voice of his word. Go get my servants. Hallelujah. One day I'll preach about angels. Go get my angels. Hallelujah. I'm going to assign an angel to my son. Go bring the best robe. Take them dirty clothes off. He's my son. Y'all ain't hearing me up in this place. Glory to Jesus' name. See, they taught us a long time, taught, taught us some bad teaching. Glory to God, but we didn't because they didn't understand grace, Elder Patterson. Come on, somebody. See, see, when you when you blow it, when you sin, it ain't God that keeps reminding you of it. The Bible talks about throwing them sins in the sea of forgiveness, and God don't bring it up no more. It's the devil that keeps reminding you of them sins you committed. Glory to God, because he wants you. He wants to, to have you feeling bad about yourself. He wants you to be scared to come before your daddy, your heavenly father, and let, come on somebody, and lay it all down on the line. So he sits there and he talks to you. He, my God, he, he my, what word am I looking for? My God, my God, my, say it again. Condemnation. 
and he tries to condemn you. He did it to me a time or two, times a hundred. Tricked me in the, when I was trying to come to the Lord. Actually, I was with the Lord already. But through re re religiosity and tradition, they tell you you're not there yet. Unless you ain't got, unless you're not wearing a suit, unless you're wearing a suit, unless you got this and unless you got that. I was already in the Lord. You ain't hearing me. Somebody say, when was you? I was in the Lord. You got to understand there was time when I'd be OD overdosing on something that I had taken, glory to God. And I found myself holed up in some little old nasty motel about to die. And I would call on Jesus. Come on, somebody. I would call on Jesus. And ask Jesus, just give me another chance. If you just wake me up, yet, then let me live. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I must have been there because the Bible says that the Lord don't hurt here the prayers of sinners. So something might had already changed in me. God wasn't putting me in the sinner category. Come on, somebody. Because the sinner is dealing with, come on, somebody, the nature of the individual. What God was saying is since you have received me as your Savior, the truth is you have a different nature. Your nature is not the nature of a sinner. Your nature is the nature of one who is righteous, one that is born again. Now, your brain ain't woke up to it yet. Oh, but this seed is opening up, and it's going to communicate to your mind to tell you who you really is today somebody get on their feet and praise them for 30 seconds or so hallelujah will I get myself a drink of water oh y'all ain't gonna help me praise him Somebody on the Facebook, glory to God, is getting delivered. Somebody on YouTube is getting delivered. Somebody getting delivered. You're already there. It's the devil making you think you got to do this, that, and the other thing. The day you confess Jesus as your Savior, you was in. You was in, baby. You might not feel like you in, but you are in already. You're in with the in crowd, praise the Lord. You've got an inheritance. You have an inheritance. You are in. You have an inheritance. Yeah. That's why Jesus said the devil's a liar. Told him, told you he's the father of lies. See what it is, he's designed to keep you bound. He don't want you loosed. Come on, somebody. He don't want you loosed. Because he know if you get loosed, you'll sit up there and tell somebody else who they are. You'll wake up to who you are, and you'll tell somebody who they are. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, I'm loosed. I'm loosed up in here. Somebody say, I'm loosed. Hallelujah, glory to God, I'm loosed up in here. He has delivered me from the snare of the fowler. I'm loosed up in here. I know the truth and the truth has loosed me to make me free. I'm loose right now. That's how come I can claim my healing, praise the Lord, before I feel a thing. Hallelujah, the same faith that I use, glory to God, to get saved. I use the same faith to say I'm delivered. The same faith to say I'm healed. Y'all ain't gonna help me up in this place. We done made folks seem like it's all hard to get the Holy Ghost. You gotta do this you gotta do that and we don't understand that the Holy Ghost has already been given folks need to relax and just receive him and go ahead and speak in the name of Jesus I feel like preaching see I got, I got a history on this thing I understand what I'm talking about had I known that I wasn't trying to get in somewhere that I was already in I wouldn't have made half the mistakes I made I know that's right. The Holy Ghost is talking right now. See, the devil likes to com you to compare yourself with somebody else who got stuff. He tries to make, make you command yourself, compare yourself to other folk who got stuff. To make you think that the stuff is the reason that, that, that defines their blessedness. Some of that stuff ain't the blessing. Some of that stuff turns out to be the curse. Have you ever got yourself in a good job? A good paying job? 
and you just knew you was there. You had the title. You, you had the office. You had everything but, but joy. Oh, you ain't hearing me up in this place. You got the prestige. You got the title. You, you got your upgraded resume. You can go to your folk and tell them I'm a supervisor. You can go to the folk and tell them I'm a manager. But you don't never tell them about all the hell I said it. All the hell you go through each and every day just to hold on to that title. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach up in here. But I'm a preacher like I know it. Glory to Jesus' name. Took a job before upgrading my name from a technician to an engineer. And it was hell. Y'all ain't hearing me up in this place. These folk didn't care nothing about, didn't care nothing about God. Tried to work me to death. Praise the Lord. Racist, prejudiced, discriminatory, all kind of crazy. Make me want to kick somebody. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me up in this. Got these folk looking like Mr. Mr. Peabody telling me something. I know young y'all don't understand Mr. Peabody. That was Bull Winkle now. Up in my telling me something. I said, do you you don't know you don't you don't know what I know? I got some moves that I learned in Buffalo, New York. I ain't even pulled out yet. Don't you understand? I've been at hurt you up in here. You got power while we in this building. I dare you to say that to me in that parking lot. I am. Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah to get me out of that room. <laughs> hey. Glory to Jesus name. Hallelujah. So let's, let's, let's take down a few points. We understand the end of the story. Hallelujah. First, there's some conditions that must be met for receiving God's guidance. Come on, somebody. First, we got to learn the word. Uh, back in Proverbs chapter 3, it says, my son, don't forget my law. Mm -hmm. But let your heart keep my commandments. Uh-huh. <laughs> told him in verse 4 if you do that you're going to find favor come on somebody shout favor. favor he said you do it you'll find favor and get good understanding Hallelujah. What, look, what, what, no, 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 pay attention he says in the sight of God and what else did he say Elder Patterson in the sight of man, sight of man. Uh -huh. ah in other words God said I got all the angles covered yeah. Yeah. Yeah, come on he said I got all the angles covered See, see, your friends that don't know this word, what they try to tell you is y'all are spiritual. But God said, if you obey this word, he said, I'll set you up. You'll be right with me and I'll put you with the right people. We got to know, we got to study his word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We got to allow the Holy Ghost to write the word on our hearts. What we really dealing with is obedience to the word. The Bible's teaching us that obedience to the word can add years to our life. Somebody say amen to that. Yeah. And I, as I'm moving into the second point, amen, glory to God, hallelujah, we got to obey God's will. Now, the Bible says he will direct our paths. We got to trust him, Minister Allen. We got to trust him with all our hearts. Sometimes we get in a hurry. I remember a long time ago, that was this, this, I think his name was Elder Brazil, or it might have been Elder, Elder Clendell Williams, thinking a long time ago. It was in this little, I think it was at Bible Way, and a revival was going on. And, 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 and he came to me, and he said, son, God got a call on your life. He, and I looked at him and said, yeah, I knew something was going on. Y'all ain't hearing me. I knew something was going on in my life. He said, God's got a calling on your life. He said, but let God do it. Y'all got to, you got to understand what he was telling me. He said, let God do it. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't take that shortcut. A whole bunch of young preachers took. Just because they get an applause when they preach. 
He said, don't get it twisted. He says there's a difference between young youth energy and the anointing. Ah. Oh, yes. He says there's a difference between energy because you're young and having the hand of God on your life and anointing. Hallelujah. As I get up in my age, I understand I can't stump like I used to. Ah, come on somebody I might stump when I preach but glory to God when I get home my knees be talking to me oh y'all don't want to help me up in this place I know what I'm talking about hey glory to God there's a difference between youth and an anointing hallelujah you got to understand there's a difference glory to God between the way the world evaluates things and the way God evaluates things ah Man can throw money at anything and make it big and make it beautiful. But there to be no, my God, anointing in it that change anybody's life. God wants us raised up to learn how to lay hands on the sick that they might uh, uh, recover. God wants you and I to know how to speak his word. Hallelujah, glory to God, in season and out of season. God wants you to know that he's your source of supply. We got to obey God's will. Yes. You might be thinking, but I'm already going on 50 and, and I got this call on me and it's taking God too long. Some people didn't sit up there and listen to somebody that told them stuff about they self and that person that told you about they self can't even tell their own self about their own self. Got you all the way out there on the end of that plank. Glory to God. About to get eaten up by the sharks. Obedience. We've got to trust God with all our heart. And obey him in all our ways. What does that mean, Mother Dixon? It means a total commitment to God. See, when this word says trust. Ah. From the Hebrew, it means something different than what we say trust. Uh -huh. We say trust. Oh, you know, every relationship is built on trust. But that still didn't define trust. When this word in this Hebrew, when it means, when it says trust, it, first lady, watch this. It means uh, to lie helpless. To lie face down. It means to prostrate yourself. Before God. In other words, it's like the policeman say. I don't know whether any of y'all ever had this experience, but they say, put your hands up. Come on. Stop in your tracks to lay down with your hands out to your side. In other words, you're helpless. In other words, I give. It's synonymous with a, a tap out. I'm tapping out God. I give. I'm not struggling anymore. I'm not going to put up a fight. I surrender. Third, we got to learn how to give. It says verse 9, said, I'm going to do Lord with your substance and the first fruit of all your increase. These are conditions we got to meet. We got to learn his word. We got to obey his will for our lives. Now, hold on. The Bible in general, in, 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 how can I, generally, is the will of God. But you still got to seek the Lord specifically for your life. I, I don't care. You know, they got these Bible codes and everything. I don't care which way you program this Bible in a computer to figure out a code. You ain't going to find the name Clifford Sesame in there. That's right. That's true. That's right. Or whatever your name is. That's right. That's true. You got to seek the Lord specifically for your life. That's right. That's right. We got to learn how to give. Some people would like to divide things up in silos. Oh, this is the material and this is the spiritual. But the real deal is all of it belongs to God. Everything belongs to God. See, 
when we don't faithfully give to God, it means we don't really trust him. I can't give you that, God, because I got to pay this bill. See, when you pay that bill, when you give to God, regardless of that bill, God, you got to come through. I surrender. Mathematically, God, you know, you won't, I only make a hundred, but you, you know, and I need really a hundred ten, but here you is asking me for ten, and that's going to put, bring me down to ninety, and, and that make I me, mean, I'm be twenty more away from the hundred and ten that I need, but when you do it, and God says, you can test me in this. If I won't open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, will that be not be room enough to receive it? It's like I preached on, 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 on Tuesday. Your blessings of the, of the Lord on your life is supposed to be seen. He says every nation will call you blessed for you shall be a delightsome land, said the Lord of hosts. And last but not least, we got to learn how to submit to what the Lord is doing in our lives. We got to learn how to submit to his chastening. Listen, I know it's not the popular thing. Is that the right word? The popular, what's the word? What, give me one of them nowadays vernacular words. PC, politically correct, to pop that rump. When your children get out of hand, whoop them. I probably said something. They said, now that sounded sexual to me. No, I'm talking about a whooping. Mama loved me. That's why she whooped me, Sister Siler. Daddy loved me. That's why they whooped us. Now, I, I, I think they could have chose some different words when they said they was going to whoop us. They said, now you're going to get a killing. None of y'all ain't never heard that before? Yeah, yeah. Mm, I'm going to say, now nah, you're going to get a killing. Yeah. Uh -huh. They could have chosen different words. But just think about all of the madness I got myself into. Thank God for the whoopings. Yes, sir. Amen. I said, thank God for the whoopings. Yeah. I'm going to tell y'all, some of y'all good. I got get Y'all get one whooping a year and stuff. Shoot. I was telling somebody, I said, mama says she's going to whoop you. You call yourself going to be good. Wait till your daddy get home, boy. And you call, you're going to be good. You washing the dishes. You cleaning the, the, face, the baseboards of the house. I know this is old school. We, we had ba them baseboards. We're doing the baseboards and f making up our bed and got the clothes folded up. You're going to be real. They don't even hear you move. You just so quiet. You, you, just, you just being real good. You being nice. You know, you ate your food and put everybody, get every, you know, you didn't did, and, and you didn't slid into the bed. You know, you, you, you know, you got a big family, ain't that many bedrooms, so y'all got some bunk beds up in there. And you the older, so you got the top bunk. And you in there, you just, oh, you sleeping good. Oh, God, I made it. I, and all of a sudden, glory to God, in the middle, about 10 o'clock at night, the door bust open, boom, and all of a sudden, whap, whap, whap. Covers getting pulled off. You trying your best to hold on to the blanket, and she pulling the thing off. You just didn't. And you say, "What you doing?" I told you I was gonna get you, boy. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, up here smoking cigarettes. I'm gonna wear you out. I just say, well, I ain't. They said, yes, you have. Your daddy found them aqua filters under your pull pillow. Y'all remember them aqua filters? Those them things you put on the end of the cigarette, so it won't be so. When you're trying to smoke them cools, it, it don't burn your lungs. So you put a little filter on there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, your daddy found them under your pillow. That let you know while you out the house at the school, they they in there searching your bedroom. Oh no, we, th this room is off limits to the parents. We don't go in their rooms anymore. They, 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 said on t they, they showed an 18-year-old boy down in San Diego this morning. Had got caught, the police busted him with a thousand hits of acid. I think it was three, five kilos of cocaine, weapons, and $50,000. Mama don't go in his room. 
Don't go in that room. Wait a minute. As long as I pay this bill, I'm up. You know what I'm saying? So God chastens us. God chastens us. God chastens us. You know, God is a good God. I'm coming for a close. We started late, but I'm, start, I'm getting there, coming in for a close. I had a pressing financial matter on a personal level. And I had a deadline date that I had to meet this obligation. And I prayed and I asked God, I said, God, I need such and such amount of money. And God never, God didn't say, oh, I'm going to do it by that date. I'm going to do this. He didn't give, he, I, he's like, I think it was Minister Allen preaching other days and God didn't say nothing. But I'm teaching on God as my source. Yes. He's my provider. Yes. So on a general level, somewhere in my heart, first lady, I know that somehow God is going to make a way. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Somehow. Yes, yes. And I was talking to this gentleman that I have this financial arrangement and this obligation with and I just went on ahead and broke the news to him I said I'm understanding by a certain certain date I gotta have this money he said don't worry about it I said I know but the papers work he said don't worry he said I trust you he said do you trust me I said I trust you he said I, then I, if you trust me I trust you Look, look, look what he said, y'all. I said, but, but, you know, I said, I just had to get my, put my, all my, my cars in the shop. I said, and then I, I, my other car, it's making a noise. I got to, he said, what I just say? Don't worry. I said, but the legal papers say this. He said, it's going to happen anyway. That other part is between me and you. Y'all got to understand what I'm saying. In other words, God is saying, is showing me this is my will for you. I don't want you stressed out. You hear what I'm saying? I don't want you breaking out in hives over it. You just keep doing what you've been doing. You keep giving. You keep sowing. You keep preaching. You keep praising. You keep worshiping. You keep teaching. You keep loving. You keep on loving. You keep doing what you do and I'll keep doing what I do. Because that's what I do. You praise like the song said, praise is what I do. When you praise me, come on somebody, I manifest myself. Y'all ain't hearing me. See, when you praise God, even though you're going through, he manifests himself. That's why they call him, Elder Patterson, Jehovah Shammah. He's the God that proves he was there all the time. <laughs> He was there all the time, waiting patiently in line. Oh, he was there. The Lord was there all the time. Let's stand to our feet and give him some praise. Let's stand to our feet and give him some praise. He's there. I don't know what you're going through, but he's there. I don't know what happened to you, but God is there. Come on, somebody. I don't know what the devil trying to put on you, but I'm here to tell you God is there all the time. He doesn't skip, he don't slumber, and he don't sleep. He's there all the time. His way is the best way. Father, in Jesus' name. Put me on some music, please. Any soft music. I feel like praying today. I'm going to pray for everybody from here. I want my son to come up here. Reggie, stand right here. First lady, you stand right here. Grab a microphone. Give your mama a microphone. We're not going to lay hands on nobody today, but we're going to pray for you. Is that all right? Can y'all receive that? Is yours on? No, it's not on.
Ishe. Come on, sir. Come on, Zion. You, 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 you coming on. on. Praise the Lord. Yes. Which talk, Reggie? Thank you, Jesus. Talk, Renee. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Help me pray. He said, Come to he said, Lobo Shelly Glory, glory, Hallelujah, Robo Shed, no Robo Shed, Idiona. In the spirit, pray in the spirit. He said, Lobo Shanda. He and another Robo Shanda. He and another Robo Shanda. He and another Robo Shanda. Your 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 Robo Shanda. Hallelujah. Yet, the Robo Shanda. Robo Shanda. Robo Shanda. Robo Shanda. We saturate this place with your presence, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. He's there. He's Jehovah Shama. He's God. He's God. Besides him, there is no other. He's God. He's the creator of heaven and earth. Keep praying in tongues. He's the creator of heaven and earth. He's the God that'll see to it. He's the God that'll see to it. He's Jehovah Shammah. He's Jehovah Shammah. He understands that financial predicament. I said he understands that financial predicament. He's going to see to it. He's going to see you through it. Yes, he is. He's going to see you through it, said the Lord. I'm going to see you through it, said the Lord. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Not only am I Jehovah, you're, you're Jehovah Shammah, but I'm your Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I heal you now, said the Lord. I heal you, said the Lord. There's a person in this room. You've been hurt. You've been hurt bad. But God has a word for you. Hallelujah. God has a word for you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Thank you, Jesus. 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 For he says, I will restore health unto thee. And I will heal thee of all thy wounds, said the Lord. God has a word for somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know where who you are. But my advice to you is that in your own way, right where you're at, right where you're standing, right while you're driving, right where you are, Surrender your heart to the Lord today. Surrender your heart to Jesus. Let him in. Hey, glory. Let him in. Let him handle your problem. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let him handle your problem. 
Show him that you trust him. Yes, yes, yes. Show him that you trust him. He's got a plan for your life. But you've got to surrender. He's got a plan for your life. Yes, Lord. Your plan didn't work. Your plan didn't work out. Your plan utterly failed. But God's got a plan for you. Oh, I hear something. Thank you, Jesus. I hear turn around. Thank you, Lord. I hear turn around in my spirit. I hear restoration in my spirit. God is letting talking to somebody in this place. It ain't over, said the Lord. For I have not said it's over. Hallelujah. I'm the God of a second chance. I'm the God of another chance. I'm the God of another chance. It's not over, said the Lord. It's not over, said the Lord. I'm the Lord that heals you. I'm the God that restores you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, you blew it. But I got you, said the Lord. I will not let you utterly fail. I will keep you from falling. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now somebody put their hand together if you're giving it to the Lord. Wherever you are, in your own way, you've given it to Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You've given it to Jesus. You've given that situation. You've given them, you've given them your finances. You've given them your bank account. You've given him your life. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've given him your thoughts. I heard that now. Praise you, praise you. You've given him your thoughts. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God has not given you a spirit of fear. Thank you, Jesus. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, said the Lord. Every tongue that's risen up against you and glory, 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 glory. Judgment shall be condemned. Oh, we give you praise. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We give you praise. We praise give you praise. You, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We praise give you praise. You, praise. Come on, you, church. We give you praise, Lord. We give you praise. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise is what we do. Praise is what we do. Praise is what we do. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say he won't. He won't. He never failed me. He won't. He won't, he won't, he won't, he will never fail, he won't, hallelujah, right where you are, right where you are, thank you Jesus, there's a reason we're here, yes Lord, thank you, we needed to experience the presence of the Lord, hallelujah, Sometimes stuff is deep down in your personal freezer. Did you don't even realize it down in there? You forgot it's in there. And it pops up his ugly head. Makes you act out of sorts. Makes you act untoward. It's when you need to release that thing and give it to the Lord. So open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Come on in. Yes, Lord. And heal me. Yes, Lord. Take this dark area, Lord. Yes, Lord. Take this, take this, Lord. Yes, Lord. Give me of you. Give me of you. Yes, Lord. I want more of you, Lord. Yes, Lord. More of you, Lord. More of you, Lord. More of you, Lord. More of you, Lord. I can't do it by myself. I want to teach somebody how to repent. Lord, I can't do it by myself. Repent, repent. Thank you. I've tried. Yes, Lord. I've tried yeah. to tackle this fear yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. by myself. Yes, Lord. But I can't do it, Lord. Oh, no. But I know yes, Lord. that through you, Jesus, through you, Lord. I can do it. Yes, Lord. I can do all things yes. through him. That strengthens me. That strength, who which strengthens me. Yes, yes, yes. Say Thank somebody you, say Jesus. Jesus. I choose you today. I choose you today. Oh no, I can't hear all of you. I heard about seven people. Say Jesus. Jesus. I choose you. I choose you. I choose your way. I choose your way. Today. Today and forevermore. And forevermore. And I thank you, Lord. And I thank you, Lord. For guiding me. For guiding me. Down that straight path. Down that straight now path. Now put your hands together and give him praise today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory. God's way. Glory. God's way. Is the best way. Is the best way. 
We give God the praise for his word today. Anybody receive anything today? Let me see your hands. God's way is the best way. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. We're leaving this place. Any, you have anything to share? You got anything to share? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The spirit of the Lord is still in this room. Glory, glory. But I don't want to quench the spirit. I want you to just glory, to bask glory, and marinate. Glory. That's the word. Marinate in his presence. Glory, glory. Because glory. he's doing something in your life today. Thank you, Jesus. You hear that, Brother Patrick? He doing something in you. Thank you, Lord. You hear that, Dion? He doing Thank something you, in you. Let him do it. 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 You hear that, sister Anita? He's doing something in your life. Let him do it. You hear that, Jose Luis? He's doing something in your life. Thank you. Let him do it. Thank you, Jesus. Let him do it. Thank you, Lord. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it, Evangelist Allen. Let him do it. Let him do it, Deacon PJ. Let him do it. Let him do it, Mother Dixon. Let him do it. Oh, I heard the Lord. I heard the Lord then. God said, with all your experiences. Thank you, Jesus. God said, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For all the decades oh, thank you, Jesus. of walking with the Lord. The over a half a century of living for Jesus. God says, I'll never fail you. I'll never fail you. Just do it my way. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Yes, Lord. Trust me. Sometime, Mother Dixon, we get so built up in God. We're like Paul said, we're strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Thank you, Jesus. But sometime we need to get weak in God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We call that surrender. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. When we surrender to Jesus, He lays I surrender to you, Jesus. I surrender this ministry to you, Jesus. I surrender this church to you, Jesus. I surrender it to Jesus. The finances, I surrender to Jesus. The ministries, I surrender it to Jesus. I surrender it to you, Jesus. I surrender it to you, Jesus. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I can't do it by myself. I don't even want to try no more. I surrender. I surrender, Lord. Mold me, Lord. And shape me, Lord. According to your will. Work on me, Lord. I give you my heart. I live for you, Lord. I live for you, Lord. I live for you. I live for you, Lord. Lord, I get the point. I get the point, Lord. I get the point. I get the point. I get the point. Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I would fail. Without him, my life would be drifting. Like a ship 
without a sound. Let's make it more specifically. Without God, I can do nothing. Without God, I would fail. Woo. Without God, my life would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Jesus never fail. Jesus, He never fail. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But Jesus never failed. And grandmama used to say, I tried him. He never failed. Ah, then mama would say, I tried him. He never failed. You know, heaven. And earth it shall pass away, but Jesus never fails. Now let's put our hand together and give him some praise Thank in the you. house today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. While we're in the presence of the Lord today. While we're in the presence of the Lord. Before you leave this room. Yes. I want you to tell at least three people. That Jesus never fails. He never fails. Jesus. He never fails. Hey, heaven and earth, glory, glory in my glory, past, glory, oh, way, glory, glory, but Jesus, oh, he, he, never, he never, he never failed. Now, some of y'all that's got some experiences oh, in God, I need to look at somebody and tell them, I tried him. Hallelujah. Thank he never you. failed. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I tried him. Jesus, Jesus. He never failed. Never. Heaven and earth might pass away. But Jesus, he never, he never failed. <laughs> yes, do you believe it? Yes, 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 yes. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Father, we thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord. Your precious Holy Spirit in this place. Father, my prayer is that those that may be viewing via Facebook or via YouTube will have the same experience that we have in this place. God, I'm praying, Father God, that something that was said 
would touch every life in this room that make us better, better sons and daughters of the most high God. Something, God, that will cause you us to surrender more and submit to your will. That's my prayer today. That's my prayer for the church. That's my prayer, Father. Touch us, God. Touch us, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Unholy ground. Don't sing that, Pastor Sessom. And I know that there's angels. Come on, somebody. Don't sing it. Just say it. All around. Ha <laughs> ha. Let us pray. Disobedient. Jesus, now. <laughs> we are standing in presence on holy ground. Repeat these words after me. Let the words of my mouth. And a meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord. My strength. And my redeemer. And let the church say. We want to say God bless you. I want you to find a few more people. On your way out. Now we, the freezer is full. I forgot to let y'all know. Y'all got to make some groceries today. <laughs> The freezer is full. you got to take some stuff. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has said we are in abundance. We've been giving and we've been giving people. We've been blessing people. And the more we do it, God keep giving. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we want to be a blessing to you. You, you, uh, you might have some cousins that you know. Glory to God. That's going through something. Take some. Take some. Don't. don't it, we're we're liberal. Don't be afraid to take five bags. Take what you got. Take what you want. Remember that the the, uh, the airborne stuff is over there. Amen. But I forgot that y'all y'all look to, to some people and tell them I love you in the Lord and Jesus never failed.